service. How are we doing today? I hope you're doing very, very well. It is the third video, the third review video of chapter seven, which is really focusing on multiplying fractions and so forth. Let's go ahead and get started with this last section. We have a question up here. It says 13. The table shows how many hours some of the part-time employees at this toy store worked last week. Okie dokie, Conrad worked six and two thirds, Giovanni, okay, nine and a half, Sally, ten and three quarters. Ooh, she's a hard worker. All right. Now, since this week, Conrad will work one and three quarters times as long as last week, and Giovanni will work one and one third times as long as last week, Sally will work two third the number of hours she worked last week. Match each employee's name to the number of hours he or she will work this week. Ooh, I like this problem. Let's go ahead and take Conrad. Now, if you recall, he he worked two, uh, six and two-thirds hours. Now, it says he's going to work one and three-quarters times as long. It should be an indication right away for you to notice that he's worked more. If he worked one time, it would be the same. It would be 100%. It would be exactly the same hours. However, he worked one and three-quarters, so we should get an answer that is more than six and two-thirds. We're looking at this. So let's go ahead and change this into fractions greater than one. Again, I keep referring to improper fractions. This is six times three, 18 plus two is 20. So we have 20 over three, and then we're gonna multiply that with four. And then of course, we're gonna add the three, giving us seven fourths. I always look for opportunities to cancel, or I also like to say to divide out common factors. Here we have a common factor of four. So I'm gonna divide that four out so that I get uh, the five up there and the one. Now we end up with 35 over three. And if we put this back as a mixed number, three will go into 35. What do we say about, ooh, 10, 11, 11 times, looks like to me. 11 times three is 33 with two left over. So then he would have worked 11 and two thirds. And as you can see right here, I do believe that this Conrad is gonna go with that amount right there. Okay, so now we'll go with Giovanni. He had nine and a half. And we're gonna multiply that, of course, by his amount, which was one and one third, again, number should be larger than a nine and a half. And if we do the uh, fractions greater than one, we're at 18, 19, 19 halves. We're gonna multiply that with three, four thirds. Uh, I do see a chance to cancel, divide out a two, and that's going to give us 38 over three. Three will go into 38, it looks like 11, 12 times. 12 times is 36, that's gonna leave two left over. Do we have a 12 and two thirds? We do. So this one here, Giovanni, He's going to go straight across. Let's just go ahead and do 10 and 3 fourths then, times 3 quarters. Oh, I'm sorry, 2 thirds. Now we're going to go ahead and put this as 43 fourths times 2 thirds. I do see a common factor here. And 43 thirds, I don't believe so. 4 plus 3 is 7. No, that would not be. So we're going to have 43 over 6. 6 will go into 43, 8, no, 7, 7 times. That's 42. So we end up with 42 with 1 left over here, 1, and then the 6, 7, 1, 6. And it is 7, 1, 6, so we know we're on the right track. Okay. Fun, fun, my friends, fun. Peggy is making a quilt using panels that are one, I mean, sorry, are a half foot by a half foot. The quilt is five and a half feet long and four feet wide. Let each square of the grid below represent one half foot by one half foot. Draw a rectangle on the grid to represent the quilt. All right, so each one of these little units here, each square on the grid is a half foot by half foot. So looking at this, we can see here, if we just went half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five. So we have five feet for the width here. We only need four feet. Here we have, well, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have seven feet uh, across. We only need five and a half. All right, so I'm just going to grab a rectangle. And so I'm going to try to do the width here, and then I'll do the length. So the width I need, four feet. So I think we, did, we said there was five. So that means here and here. So if I took a half, one foot, a half foot from each side, uh, all right, let's see, okay, a half foot, that would be one foot. So I think if we do this right here, we should be in luck. All right, I'm gonna bring it right there, and I'm gonna come across. Now I need, uh, what do I need? I need five and a half. So I'm just gonna look here. One, two, three, four, five and a half. I think it's that right there. It looks like here we have width. 
a half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, and a half. And then we have four feet, half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four. There we go. We are good to go. So this is, now this wouldn't be the only, obviously your, your figure could be over here, it could be up there. So wherever you draw it, did not have to be in that exact spot. Let's look at part B. What is the area of the quilt? Explain how you found your answer. You, we, we could actually count each one of those half foot uh, squares inside that grid, but that's a lot. We know that area is equal to length times width. And so if length times width, we just need to multiply five and a half by the four and that should give us our area. We'll change this into a fraction greater than one, 11, 11 halves, 10, 11 halves, okay, times four. Okay, that's going to equal 44 over two. And now we can go ahead and divide that out. 44 divided by two is half, so that's 22. So our answer is 22, 22 square feet. Uh, answer, does that seem reasonable? Yeah, I would say if these are half foot, would be half foot. Yeah, it seems pretty reasonable, 22 square feet. I guess this box was just to do, oh, it also is to explain how you found your answer. Okay, so we have to explain. So I'm going to go ahead and explain, and then like I do with my normal magic, I'll type that up in just a matter of seconds. So let's go ahead and explain. Well, the way we did it, we didn't really use, we, we did the algorithm right here. We just took the five and a half times the four and got our answer this way. I, I thought this was the quickest way. But they did have us do this model here. If we were going to use our model, that wouldn't be the only way that you could solve that. You could solve it another way. You could think of it as there's eight rows here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven columns. Well, you could take eight times eleven. Of course, eight times eleven is going to equal eighty-eight. And that's 88 squares then. But remember, each square rep represents an area of a half foot by a half foot. So a half foot by a half foot is what each square represented. So that's going to equal one quarter. A quarter, well, actually a quarter square foot. So that we could take that 88 then times the quarter. And that's going to be 88 then times a quarter. It's just going to be 88 over 4. And of course, 88 divided by 4 well, that's going to equal 22 square feet. Okay, so that's another way. And there we go. So what we just talked about, about there being eight rows and 11 columns of squares, we had a total. All right, let's go on to the next page. Yeah, okay. Ruby conducted a survey and found that five-sixths of her classmates have a pet, and two-thirds of those pets are dogs. Yeah, dogs rule. What fraction of her classmates has dogs? What fraction? Okay, write a number from the number tiles in each box to complete the calculation shown below. You may use numbers more than once or not at all. What's important here, obviously we already did, which was just to read the instructions, right? <laughs> How many of us forget to do that? So we read the instructions to make sure that we understand. So here the problem is showing our five, six of the classmates. It's being multiplied because we have that of, right? Two thirds of those pets were dogs. So they're just asking us to repeat this. I'm assuming 5, 6 times the 2 thirds. That's how we're going to find 2 thirds of 5, 6. And of course, that's going to equal 10 over 18 by just multiplying the numerators and then the denominators. And then, of course, that we can reduce by taking on a common factor of 2. If you divide that by 2, you divide that by 2, we end up with 5 ninths. So the answer is going to be 5 ninths of her classmates. And it appears like that I used all those tiles there. Next problem, Robbie is using the recipe below to make chicken noodle soup. He plans to make six batches of the soup. He has two thirds teaspoon of black pepper. Okay, cool. And this is what he needs here. What do we got? Some broth, some medium carrots. Okay, those are all our little ingredients. Now part A though says write an expression that Robbie can use to determine how much black pepper is needed for six batches. A key word here too is an expression. So we're not being asked to solve this, just an expression. Well, it says one teaspoon of ground black pepper. This would be one batch. So if we needed six batches, we're just going to take, I guess, the six batches times one eighth teaspoon. That's it. We don't have to do anything else. Just as an expression. It says draw a model to show how Robbie can find the product from part A. Well, I have my little model here. I think this is going to be way too tiny. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put the model over here rather than that little blue square. So... If I were to show a model of this, 
Here I have an example of one hole. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This hole has been broken up into eight equal pieces. I could shade in one of these, and that would represent the one eighth teaspoon of ground black pepper. Now, but I need six batches, right? So there's one teaspoon, there's another one, here's another one, one eighth teaspoon, another one eighth. Remember, you need six batches. So this is going to equal. So if we took each one of those, those six, we could take one of these. So this way I could basically make a few of these. So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to transfer these up here. So I have six. So let me put the six right here. Here's three. Here's four. Here's five. And we'll make one more. And now I have six. All I've done is I've moved those onto one. It didn't quite make a whole teaspoon. It made one, one eighth teaspoon, but it did make a whole... Yeah, I mean, one teaspoon is one eighth of a tea, one eighth teaspoon. So I have two available. Well, let's rewrite that fraction, though. We could do that. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six out of eight. And that uh, can also be reduced. You take out a two, we end up with three quarters. Draw a model, show how Robbie can find the product from part A. So this is definitely our model. So we kind of, we completed that. What is part C indicate here? Does Robbie have enough black pepper for six batches of the soup? Explain your reasoning. Okay. Does he have enough? Well, he needed, he had two-thirds. Okay. That's how much he has. I'm assuming he doesn't have any other black pepper. That's what is the idea of this problem. So if he only has two-thirds. So the question is, if we have three-quarters, is how much he would need for six batches listed here. He has two-thirds. So what we're really doing here is we're evaluating three-fourths and two-thirds. Now, if his, if the three-quarters is smaller than the two-thirds, then we know he has enough. But if the two-thirds is smaller than three-quarters, then he doesn't. So how can we evaluate those? Well, by evaluating those, you might notice right away that, well, if we were to draw a model, those have four equal pieces, those have three equal pieces, three of those would be shaded of that amount in two. And for some students, that might be kind of hard to look at and know which one's larger. Maybe you've memorized them, and that's okay. So we could, we, what we could do is compare them through using a common denominator, basically you know, create an equivalent fraction, which we'll do here. So if I multiply this by 4, that's obviously giving me my new denominator. So 2 thirds is 8 twelfths, and 3 quarters in this case is 9 twelfths. Oh, pretty, pretty equal, really close. But 3 quarters is larger than 2 thirds because 9 twelfths is larger than 8 twelfths. So there you go. That's basically how we explained our reasoning. And probably more than, again, more than one way to compare that. We did an extra step. I will go ahead and write my reasoning down like I always do. So like as we talked about, Robbie needs 6 of those 1 eighth teaspoons, which we determined to be 6 eighths, which is the same as 3 quarter teaspoon of black pepper so that he can make the six batches. But since 3 quarters is equal to 9 twelfths, and he only has 2 thirds teaspoons, which is 8 twelfths, he does not have enough black pepper to make six batches. In fact, he just needs one twelfth more black pepper. Okay, hey, it's yet another end to another math video. Again, thank you for your participation. And as always, my friends, live long and prosper.